Hey guys, welcome back to Whole Bright Life. It's your girl, Lady V. Listen, if y'all knew the trouble that I had to just go through to post this video, like the sun, like the phone kept falling because you don't have one of those things where you put in your car where you put your GPS and you post it up on your dashboard or whatever, whatever, because like I have been driving, like doing Uber and DoorDash and stuff, and I've had those things to fall down on me, like just out of nowhere, and I'm driving. So I don't have one anymore, <laughs> and it was hard to prop the phone up. But anywho, I am here with a word, um, a testimonial word, a ground shifting word for someone today um so i wanted to give you guys a little backdrop of back when i was in a prodigal state uh, i did testify a little bit about it in a message i posted maybe a few weeks ago um but this is gonna like hone in on a specific part of my prodigalism <laughs> Everybody got a prodigal day. If you're not one now, you were one before coming to the Lord, coming to an intimate relationship with God. And everybody is at a different place in their walk. So I just pray that this is a blessing to wherever you may be um, in your walk. And yeah, so I was in the prodigal state, y'all. This was da, 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 2019 right before the pandemic. And um, I was just in my own headspace. Um, I was going my own way. I took a detour, you know, from doing that, which I knew was right and what God had called me to do. I was not seeking him. Um, I was not in my word. I was not praying earnestly. I would from time to time, but it would be to repent. Lord, I'm so sorry. You know, um, but I did not turn to repent means to turn from that way that you're walking in that, you know, is wayward um, or ungodly. And I just continued in my own way on um, the backslider. The Bible says is full of his own ways. And so but the good thing about it is that God is still married to the backslider. So though you walk away, though we stray away from him, he never leaves us. I don't care. If we in the juke joint, I don't care if we in the crack house. I don't care if we in the middle uh, of a gang, you know, God will come in. He will intercept. He will intervene. OK, and he will pursue our hearts. He will go after the one leaving that ninety nine. So. Yeah. Um, I was in this state of doing my own thing. Uh, workaholic syndrome, you know, trying to drown out everything that I knew I was not doing to line up with what God wanted me to do. And so I was soothing my own pain, you know, and uh, yeah. So yet God was still dealing with me. He was still dealing with me. Um, so one of my friends, my dearest friends, friend of the family, um, my children's aunt um, called me and wanted me to start taking her to the doctor. Um, no, no, no. I got a call that she was in the hospital, just out the blue. So we found out that it was her kidney and it was failing. And she was trying to get a replacement. And now she was going to need dialysis. I mean, it went from her working full blown 70 hours a week to her on the hospital bed, not working at all. I mean, it was drastic, um, very sudden. And uh, it caught her off guard. It caught me off guard. She had um, twins, which are my children's cousins. I mean, we were just all caught off guard by this. And so. She's this no, don't worry about me type person. I got it. You know, but I just saw where, you know, she needed a friend and we were, um, you know, close, but not as close as we were during this time. 
And so I would bring her stuff to eat because she had stopped eating at one point. And then she asked me to come take her and give her a shower. And then she caught a fever. And I was like, oh, my God. Um, and then they had to change her her stent that was in her chest. Because that's how you get dialysis. It goes through, you know, your veins. Um, very draining, painful process. And so... All of a sudden, she got a burst of energy uh, after a couple of weeks um, of us driving to the to dialysis and me having to leave her there and feeling the pain of, you know, watching her go through this. One time she cried because, the stent, you know, they had to take it out and, and put a new one in. Oh, it was just so emotionally um, painful for her and for me to watch. And, um, yeah, so... Time went on and she got, a, like I said, she's got a burst of energy out of nowhere and she began to drive herself around and she was like, I got it. I'm doing good. She was dressing herself. Everything was great. Um, and then she got a, a at home nurse and she passed out. They did dialysis from home and I don't know what, you know, really took place during that time because I wasn't around when she was like getting dialysis at home. And it was just only one week that she was doing this. And she passed out at the beginning of the week. By the end of the week, she was gone. When I got the phone call, I was at work. And I just, not only that, right before that, I won't say what it was specifically, but God touched my heart to bless her with something very special. Um, and she was getting ready to go to her brother's wedding that Friday. And she just felt so good about herself. She felt like a queen. She felt so special. And um, she was telling people how that gift that I gave her made her feel. and. Right after that, she died. Her name was Hope. And God quickened me from that experience. So God knows how to reach us. He knows how to, to grab our hearts right where it needs to be grabbed so that he can get our attention, so that he can draw us back in, and so that we can wake up to purpose. Because what he revealed to me was while I was in my own way, stuck in my own way, hope was dying. Hope for somebody else was dying. People that I was supposed to be reaching, like what I'm doing right now, was not even a thing. I hadn't even gotten to this point where I was healed enough or um, willing and open enough to share in this way and let God flow through me like this. Because when you're backslidden, you're ashamed. You're hiding, you know, behind your pain. And you don't want anybody to connect with you like that, you know. And... Yeah, so hope was dying, literally. Hope was dying. And I immediately, because they wanted me to come sing um, at the funeral. Now, that's what took the cake. That's what floored me. Because then I had to sing over her body, like, and, and actually see this happening right before my eyes and let God use me like he wanted to anyway. Right at my friend's funeral. And so I left there convicted. I left there with a change of heart. And when I got back to my prodigal situation, prodigalism, I began to pray. 
I begin to repent. I begin to cry out to God. I begin to say, God, I'm so sorry for, you know, going my own way. I'm so sorry that hope was dying and I didn't even know it. But thank you for coming to see about me. Thank you for not giving up on me. And so he led me step by step as I prayed and called out to repent to walk away from that lifestyle. And I don't regret it. I don't regret any minute of any persecution, of any warfare, um, because it's, it's rewarding. And what the enemy doesn't want you to see is that as long as you stay in that state of rebellion and waywardness, then that you're going to live in a dry land, a rebellious dry dwell in a dry land and things are drying up your blessings, you know, your breakthroughs, the desires of your heart, because you're not delighting yourself in the Lord. You know, he knows that if you stay in that state of selfishness and carnality, that you're only feeding your flesh, which profits you nothing. And so I pray for someone that you would wake up to purpose, wake up to the hope of your calling. Because somebody needs that testimony. Somebody needs what's in you, those gifts, those talents, that anointing. That's waiting on you. God's, God's got it. And he's waiting. He won't force. But he will pursue. He loves you. He loves you right where you are. He's not forgotten about you. You know, he's not going to ever leave nor forsake you. And so... I just want to leave you with this scripture slash prayer from Paul, who was once a backslider, who was once a prodigal, who was going against the way. He was going against the way that Jesus had made for us to come to the Father. And he said, after he had been converted from Saul to Paul. And I pray that the eyes of your heart, the very center and core of your being, may be enlightened, flooded with light by the Holy Spirit, so that you will know and cherish the hope, the divine guarantee, the confident expectation. I love that. To which he has called you. The riches. Of his glorious inheritance. In you. It says the saints. But I'm calling. You. His people. His beloved. He wants to use you. He wants to. Use you. To change hearts, minds. He used Paul greatly after he was converted. He was blinded for three days and God redirected him from going against the way to being all the way sold out for the way. I pray that you be all the way sold out no longer straddling the fence, no longer one foot in, one foot out, no longer lukewarm, but hot on fire for God, filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with faith and courage to fulfill the hope of his calling on your life. Wake up to purpose. Wake up to the calling. He's calling you. Answer, answer. Every day someone is going home to be with the Lord or going home to eternity. We're going to spend eternity somewhere. Whether it be with God in heaven 
the place that he made for us to be or with the enemy in Hades, the place he didn't design for us to be, but was made for the devil and his demons. And so I encourage you, be enlightened. Be flooded with the light of the Holy Spirit. May it open up your heart to see that there's a place for you. There is a plan for you. There's much greater than the four walls that you're sitting in right now. And the depression and the darkness that looms over your head right now. Most people that battle depression and battle suicidal thoughts are the very people who minister life to those who feel the same way. He did it for Paul. So now he was able to minister to the same ones who went against the way because he was one of them. The chief, he said, (laughs) the chief of sinners. I was the chief of going against the way, of bucking up against the way. And so I am convicted all over again to run for him wholeheartedly by this very message. And I pray that it has blessed you. um, And yeah. Wake up. Wake up from your sleep and your slumber. Wake up. It's time to answer the call. It's hope. It's hope for somebody for you to wake up. Amen. God bless you guys. Wholeness is a lifestyle. May you walk in it. Be blessed.